Okay, so in this lab, we're going to study the effect um, of element types on the very specific load that we're considering is bending. Okay, so we will consider this cantilever beam and uh, um, on this free end, there is a load applied on the other end. Um, it's completely fixed on the wall and uh, these are the dimension and the elastic properties of this beam. Um, we will uh, model this beam with abacus and uh, compare the tip deflection, the deflection at, uh, at the tip at which the load is applied um, with the theoretically calculated value by this equation, which ends up being 3.09 millimeters. Okay, um, we will consider various types of elements, um, the one with full integration and one with reduced integration and see what, challenge, what, what challenges each um, type of element brings out. Um, in the full integration case, um, there is a phenomenon called shear locking that appears, um, that appears because the element cannot handle bending properly because the element is a linear, if you're considering fully integrated linear element subjected to bending moment, you can see that the actual deformation should look like oh, this one over here where the edges um, are curved to account to accommodate the bending um, deformation while for the linear elements, as we know, the edges cannot bend since um, they are represented by the linear interpolation functions. Um, so uh, this results in a non-zero shear stress. And uh, in order to visualize that, you can um, see these dotted line, lines <clears throat> that, are, um, that are drawn through the uh, integration points. And as you can see, before and after deformation in the bending mode, and if the edges were able to curve, these dotted line will still remain perpendicular to each other. So what they show is that the shear stress or strain in this case is zero. But if you look at the linear element deformation under bending, um, you can see, yes, the top and the bottom edge would uh, would be intention and compression respectively, um, that would result in a deformation such that this dotted lines are no more at 90 degree, 90 degrees with respect to each other. So that means that is now um, some finite uh, shear deformation associated with this um, <clears throat> bending deformation um, for this beam problem. So that means uh, this non-zero shear stress um, is something artificial and that uh, results from using such linear um, fully integrated elements. And this phenomenon is called a shear locking. Okay. <clears throat> so as I said before, the spurious uh, shear stress arises because the edges of the element are unable to curve because we are using linear element. Um, and its presence means that the strain energy is creating shearing deformation rather than the intended uh, bending deformation. So overall deflections are less and element becomes too stiff. Okay, um, further Abacus mentions that the shear locking only affects the performance of fully integrated linear elements subjected to bending loads. And these elements uh, function perfectly well under direct shear loads, okay? Um, so this is a very specific case of bending loads only, okay? Uh, this is not, shear locking is not a problem for quadratic elements because they are able to curve as seen as the, in this figure. So uh, since the quadratic elements are able to curve, the uh, angle between this dotted line remain close to 90 degrees, hence very small amount of shear or zero shear will be observed when you are um, using quadratic elements. Okay. <clears throat> um, final note for this um, linear element shear locking phenomena is fully integrated linear elements should be used only when you are fairly certain that the loads will produce minimal amount of bending in your model. Okay. Um, use a different type of element if you have doubts about the type of deformation the loading will create. 
um, fully integrated quadratic elements can also lock under complex stress state. Um, thus, you should check your results carefully um, before you conclude uh, your results with your given model. Okay, so it's always um, wise to do um, to try out various element types in Abacus and uh, try try out various mesh sizes in Abacus to make sure your results are not greatly changing from one case to another. Okay, um, the next one is the reduced integration. Reduced integration have fewer integration points in each direction than the fully integrated element. So for example, for the quadratic element on the right is a fully integrated with, uh, sorry, that's, these both have reduced integration, but um, if you had a linear element, you will have these four integration points. Um, but if you're going for reduced integration, it will have only one integration point. So what is tried to say, um, integration two integ having two integration points in each direction um, will be now reduced to one point in each direction. So that means you will have only one integration points at which you will evaluate your integral. Um, the another um, good note about calculating strain um, for various types of elements um, is right here. Actually, this first order elements in Abacus use the more accurate uniform strain formulation, where average values of the strain components are computed for the element. And this distinction is not important for this dis discussion, but this is something to keep in mind for your future calculations, okay? Um, so if you look at the type of deformation similar to what we, um, uh, how we looked at at our um, fully integrated element um, is that if you visualize a dotted line, you, you'd see no change in the angle between them. That means it's also not representing shear locking but it also does not have any other um, strains, for example, in the one one direction or the two two direction. So that um, that represents that makes this uh, element to be a very flexible element. So it can show very large deformation if you were to use very uh, larger size elements in your model. Okay, and it obviously gives some meaningless results. So for example, for this reduced integration for a very coarse mesh, um, it reduce, it increases the deflection by um, 20 times as compared to our actual deflection calculated um, with the equation shown um, previously. And uh, this results in something called hourglassing of mesh in abacus and uh, to show what hourglassing looks like, I have pulled up another tutorial or another example on Abacus's manual. So here, this is um, this is your um, regular rectangular mesh with the rectangular elements, and uh, this plane represents something that's getting pushed, that is uh, pushing the mesh inwards in this direction, and uh, that results in something called hourglassing, and you can see uh, the mesh the formation is looking, uh, forming a shape of an hourglass um, right here. So it's basically alternating uh, trapezoidals that are forming. And that is something that is not real that would happen. So that this is uh, an artifact of the, um, of the reduced integration scheme. So in order to um, reduce this hourglassing um, phenomenon, Abacus use, introduces a small amount of artificial hourglassing stiffness and uh, that reduces the amount of hourglassing that happens in um, when you use the linear um, reduced integration elements. And uh, for the abacus also advises that when you're using linear um, elements, try to make sure that you're go you are again using a fine enough mesh because finer the mesh, um, this hourglass stiffness of, um, is more effective in reducing such hourglass modes um, that are produced by this reduced integration scheme. 
Uh, the third type of element in a, that Abacus offers um, are called uh, incompatible model myths. Okay, and they, these are an attempt to overcome the problems of shear locking that were associated with full integration, uh, fully integrated elements. Um, if you think of a shear locking was caused by the, uh, because the elements were not able to bend, um, the sides did not have a curvature um, that could that could only be possible uh, to represent by a quadratic element, not a linear element, right? So, so what Abacus does is uh, it introduces some kind of internal um, gradient, the internal, it enhances the deformation gradient internally to the element and not in terms of the interpolation function. And this enhancements allow these first order linear elements um, to have some kind of uh, variation deformation gradient um, within the domain so that it allows um, capturing the correct stresses and strains um, in that element um, while only using linear elements, okay? So it, we can still utilize this incompatible modes under bending uh, we can um, utilize linear elements with the incompatible mode um, types so that we can capture correct um, shear um, and other strains in the model while not using and while avoiding the usage of quadratic elements so that we also save on a lot of computational time. Okay, so these are the three major types of uh, distinction I wanted you to focus on for this lab. And uh, next we will go ahead and model this cantilever beam. Um, I will quickly walk you through how to do that. Um, it would be up to you to try out various element types with and without reduced integration and incompatible modes and our glassing stiffness, et cetera, all these options that I will show you in a little bit. Um, it is up to you to try and verify all these values uh, for your for various mesh sizes with your model. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So previously I have gone ahead and defined the model, but I'm going to start from the scratch so you know how to do it um, because we haven't dealt with two dimensional. So I'm going to create a new uh, model database. So I'm gonna click on this blank canvas button and I'm not gonna change because I'm gonna recreate the same model again. So it's gonna create a, a blank model database for me and I'm going to now start and create a part. Also remember you can create a two, uh, 3D part but I'm going to deal with a 2D planner part for now because it's something that we haven't dealt previously and it would be nice um, for you to learn how to do that in future. Um, so for to create a 2D part, you want to select the 2D planner option, type deformable and uh, in the base feature shell. So basically leave all the defaults. Um, hit continue and I'm going to create a rectangle of the length 150 millimeter and the height would be five millimeter. Okay, so another point of my rectangle would be 150 by five. So I'm done with my sketch. Get out of it, hit done. So. Unlike our 3D part, it did not ask me to extrude because it's a 2D part, right? So then the question comes of how and when should we, uh, how does the abacus know the thickness of the part, right? Um, that would be a good question that we will actually define in our section um, when we create a section for this part, okay? So before we go ahead and do that, let's create our material for this beam and Let's call, um, let's go ahead and create our elastic material properties. It's isotropic and I believe it's about, I 
it is uh, 70 gigapascal so we'll put 70 thousand here because we are dealing with megapascal millimeter system okay poisson's ratio is zero hit okay then we'll create section okay section will be always in the property module okay um, you will leave the section to be solid and homogeneous hit continue and then here you will define your thickness so our thickness in this case is 2.5 okay and this is the material we defined okay now i'm going to do the section assignment with this button and uh, i'm going to select the regions for which i want to assign this section um, this will also automatically create uh, the set set one if you can change the name if you want to i'm going to leave it as is for now hit ok and I'm also going to assign material orientation and using the default orientation for now because I'm not, it's a material is isotropic, so I don't really have to define any specific orientation for this material. Okay, so now the next step is to create a mesh. Okay, and uh, I want to create one by six. I want six elements across the length of this domain. So I'm going to seed uh, with the element the global size B25 and hit apply. Okay. And now I want to mesh the part. It is okay to mesh the part, hit yes. And it created a six rectangular elements for this geometry. Okay. Now I want to um, discuss the two different features in this mesh. Um, mesh controls and mesh element type. Okay, controls is something we have dealt previously. Mesh controls is how um, the meshing is done, what type of shapes are used in meshing. Okay, since we are dealing with 2D, it's only showing options quad and tri. Um, by default, it goes for quad dominated because if you had a complex geometry where you would need it, you would need some tri elements in order to accommodate the variation in the geometry, um, um, then you would go with this is the hybrid formulation quad dominated that would have both quad and tri elements, could have both and tri elements, but not necessarily all the time. And then these are the various techniques uh, by which this meshing is performed. This is a very straightforward case of a rectangular domain um, that doesn't really, um, whatever you use here will result in the same mesh over here. So I'm not changing that right now, but if you are to deal with, let's say uh, you're modeling a gear and you wanted to, um, if, you, if, you, if you go for a coarse versus finer mesh, then it will make a big difference of what kind of technique of meshing and algorithm you're using to mesh your gear. Okay, so right now I'm going to leave this as is, hit okay. Um, and yeah, based on what technique you choose, it will also delete the mesh and rebuild the mesh based, the based on the technique you choose. Okay, so now let's talk about element type. Click on element type and uh, then it pops up, select the regions to be assigned element types. And I'm going to select my whole beam. And then I end up with this new dialog box, okay? Now, in this dialog box, we have a um, couple of different things that we have discussed before that you might recognize. Um, first is the geometric order, whether you have a linear or quadratic element, right? For now, let's leave it to be a linear. And very first thing we want to um, try is a full integration. So that means get out of this uh, reduced integration mode. Okay, and don't um, click incompatible mode right now either. So we're going to try um, a fully integrated, a fully integrated quadrilateral, quadrilateral element. Okay, and uh, whenever you make any selection, also note this would change. So, for example, if I choose reduced integration, it will add R here. R stands for reduced integration. Okay. Um, a four node bilinear plane stress quadrilateral reduced integration in hourglass control. And as we have discussed before, um, hourglass control 
is as a, as a feature of Abacus um, that is implemented to reduce our glassing of the element, okay? But if we go choose for full integration, um, there are no other um, extra features that are involved um, with this mode, okay? So right now we're going to leave um, full integration that would be CPS for element type. So make sure um, this is the correct element type you're seeing right now, okay? Um, <clears throat> if you were to go for a disintegration, then there are more fields that would um, pop up over here, which, um, for example, hourglass control, right? If you use default values, our Abacus will figure out what to do what, with how much, um, Ab Abacus will figure out how much hourglassing is happening and uh, what is the best technique to um, reduce that hourglassing in the <clears throat> uh, in in your analysis so you can have either enhance relax stiffness and all the other options and you're feel free to um, go look at the abacus manual to what to see what each of these options actually mean and do um, during the analysis okay so for each um, for each various option there are other sub on options in terms of element controls that pop up for the purpose of this course, because we are not dealing with nonlinear analysis, all these options um, are not really used right now. So we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, let's, let's go back to our full integration. Okay, uh, make sure these are unchecked for the first part of the study. Um, further, we see this family tab that defines what kind of physics your element is representing. So far, our physics is um, the differential equation, um, focus on the differential equation and how we derived it. And uh, how did we come to that differential equation was by using a linear relationship between the stresses and strain and how the strains were related to the displacements, okay? so. For each of the physics, there are different types of elements, and uh, for current, we have uh, the we have the default option of a plane stress. So this is a plane stress element, um, a, a geometric order linear and full integration. Hence, it is CPS four type. Okay, if you were to change to a plane strain, then it will change the element type here to be CPE for, and because it by default goes to reduce integration, it will put R, but if the actual type would be CPE4, which is a four node bilinear plane strain quadrilateral element, okay? Let's keep our plane stress element for this study, um, get out of the reduce integration again, okay? Now for um, thermal people, you have other type of element, for example, heat transfer element right here, that means it is solving for the differential equation where the primary variable is temperature, okay? Not the displacement. And I believe Abacus also has a way to couple um, the heat transfer with the uh, stress problem, uh, the stress strain problem as well. So um, oh, right here, coupled different temperature and displacement uh, problem. Um, I often deal with this cohesive elements, which basically are elements that are meant to fail, meaning whenever you define this type of element that those elements can um, withstand failure. Um, and uh, basically it, stiffness of that element reduces as the displacement increases. Um, something for a advanced nonlinear study for right now, we are only dealing with plane stress in 2D or 3D stress element in three dimensional problem, okay? But also I wanted you, wanted you to focus on whether what type of initial governing differential equation that you had um, that describes basically the physics of the problem and that physics is represented in this family tree, whether you're choosing a heat transfer pro problem, you will have a heat transfer element. Um, whether you're choosing a plane stress problem, you will have a plane stress element. Okay, so hopefully all these element types 
are clear um, considering the previous presentation on the element types as well. Okay, so hit okay, we have CPS4 element. Uh, we are going for full integration right now, okay? So let's hit okay. We are done with the mesh. Now let's go and uh, create our assembly. We're going to create our instance. So uh, there's only one part, hit okay, it created by default. Um, next one is I'm going to create a step, our load step. Leave the definition as is for now. And then we'll go to our load module. In load module, what we want to do is fix our left side, uh, the left edge of this model in all the directions. So it's completely pinned and apply a load on the right side. Okay. So in order to do that, let's apply, um, let's create the boundary condition with the second tab, I'm going to go to initial. Now, whatever you create, um, whatever boundary conditions or loads you create in the initial step, it propagates to the next step as well. So that may be, that, that's the way how Abacus defines things. So, whatever um, boundary conditions that you want to propagate in the next step are created in the initial step. Um, you can also have multiple steps. So for example, um, I created a load step that was after the initial step. If I had another step load two that was defined after load step, um, all the boundary conditions that were um, created in the load were by default propagate to the load two step as well. Um, so that way you can um, turn on and off multiple different types of boundary conditions um, um, by defining multiple steps. And um, let's define these boundary conditions uh, first and then I'll show you how they look like in a window. Okay, so I'm going to go for initial step, the first uh, type of the boundary condition and to go ahead and select this fixed edge. So I'm going to name it as a fixed edge, click done. And I'm going to restrict it in all the um, degrees of freedom. Okay, and now I'm going to create a load. The load is the very first one here. And I'm going to um, select the load step here. And as soon as I do that, it will give me a whole bunch of options to choose from. So if you look at it, you can either apply a concentrated force, you can apply a moment, you can apply a pressure, um, surface traction, what else? We have a body force, you can apply body force as well. You can apply gravity. Um, there are a lot of different things that you could try out. But for this one, um, we'll choose a concentrated force. Um, you could also try out traction, but when you define a traction, traction is always defined per unit surface. So if you were to choose this surface and define traction on it, um, you would have to divide your force by the surface area um, of this uh, load surface and then define traction accordingly, okay? So right now we're going to go ahead with the concentrated force. Our force values is five Newton. Okay, so I'm going to um, choose this node because it's a concentrated force. It has to be on a point in, a, in your domain, okay? And I'm going to name as a load node, okay? And hit done. Now, my value is in the negative y direction, negative y direction, and that's what I'm gonna write as negative five. Okay, as, as far as I did that, the arrow appeared that shows the direction of the load. Now, let's see what else we have left. We have load, we have mesh. Um, I believe we can just go ahead and define, create the job. And uh, I'm going to say, bending, um, 
CPS4. So we are studying CPS4 with um, six elements. Okay, so when I say one by six, so one element in y direction, six elements in x direction. Okay, so that's when when you go make a finer mesh, um, you still have all the job files for each of the different cases. And when you can try modifying this name by changing your element types as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this job and run this job. Okay, so this job is done now. Let's click on results. And click here. So by default, we'll go to stress and one mysis. Um, we will go to displacements U that will give us the deflection. And I want to measure my Y deflection. So I'm going to choose U2. And uh, you can either query the deflection of this step by going to tools and hit on query. And you can click on node and uh, you can click on this node value. And I can see that my deflection of this node is um, zero point negative um, 0 0.2286, okay? And generally you can either do that or it is also shown by this lowest value here um, representing this blue color. Okay, so either of way you can determine the deflection of the tip. Um, and now compare that deflection with the values um, that was calculated um, that was now three point, I believe it was 3.05 millimeters. In any case, um, it's 0 0.22 versus 3.05. So using full integration, um, one by six mesh of this plane stress four node quadrilateral element, um, it's far from being accurate, okay? So now I want you to simulate all these different element types um, in Abacus with and without reduced integration and see the effect it has um, on the, uh, the tip deflection. Not only tip deflection, but also study the strain values. You can access all the strain values by clicking on E and then um, click on E11, E22, and E12. Okay, and uh, compare these values side by side, for example, reduced integration versus full integration, um, finer mesh versus coarse mesh for each element type and see how this uh, strain values change for each element across the length of the domain uh, as well as the tip deflection. Okay, so hopefully, um, you had a good understanding of how to define various element types um, in Abacus. Um, I want you to now focus on this phenomenon of shear locking um, associated with full integration of linear elements. Um, then I also want you to focus on hourglassing um, concept that is involved with reduced integration of linear elements. And um, even though you may not see hourglassing in this current scenario, um, you also have to keep in mind that hourglassing uh, is by default implemented by Abacus whenever you choose reduced integration as well. But um, that effect of hourglassing can be more and more as you go for um, more um, coarse mesh um, of your domain. Okay, so 
study hourglassing, study, um, uh, sorry, understand hourglassing. You might not be able to study in this one. Um, understand and study shear locking, okay? Try to identi identify how big the shear strains are as compared to the solution that is as close to the exact solution of three millimeter tip deflection, okay? Um, I also want you to um, analyze incompatible modes. Um, that was a third type we discussed in the previous video. Okay, so that is all for now. Um, this lab is part of your um, this week's content um, and not something that you can do anytime. You have to do this um, as a part of your regular lectures because we are dealing with various element types and uh, the way Abacus deals with it. So make sure you do that before you go ahead with the next uh, set of lecture videos. Okay, see you in the next one.